Hey guys, this is Joe from Taz Squad, and today I'm here with my friend Steve from the Flying Club, and uh, we just wanted to talk about Lippo batteries. Everybody seems to be using Lippos now, and nobody really seems to know anything about them. And they can be dangerous, and there's some things you should know about them just in general for general use. And uh, Steve's probably the best person that I know of to talk about them. Not only has he been doing RC and flying here with me for years and years and years, he's got decades of experience, but he happens to also run the RC department for one of the best RC hobby stores in all of New England. Um, if you want to give a plug, you can say the name of the store, but that's up to you. But uh, I figured we'd just go over some of the basic things about lipos and the different kinds and how to charge them and some of the things to watch for. So uh, we've got some questions for you, Steve. Shoot. All right, now, basically, can you explain the different cell sizes and the voltages that they are? I know there's more than one type. Most of the guns are using two cells, which is 7.4 volts. What Correct. are the other options? Um, LiPo batteries or any lithium battery is going to come in a number of cells. Each cell has a certain amount of voltage that it charges to. Um, this cell right here in my bat in my hand is a great option to look at right now. It's a 2200 milliamp three cell. This is generally a um, battery that's used in most aircraft um, for the smaller electric planes. Now, if you look at the battery close, you'll see there's three individual sets of bars in there. Each one of those is a LiPo cell. Um, each cell nominal is 3.7 volts on a LiPo, and that voltage changes on some batteries. Um, so the cell count total is going to play a big factor, as well as the total amount of milliamperage. Milliamperage on a battery is basically the equivalent of the gas tank size, how many gallons the battery can hold if you look at it that way. Now, uh, of course, the batteries we use in the guns are much smaller, but it's all the same, a two cell is a two cell, a three cell is a three cell. Correct. Um, Each type motor is going to run on a different voltage range to run at its optimal performance. Um, and you really have to watch how big of a battery you put into either a gun or into an RC car or airplane. Yeah, we run in with the guns when they upgrade to a, a bigger battery and go to a three cell. Um, the voltage is a little too much for the contacts on the triggers and stuff, so it tends to burn out the pieces. Um, a lot of guns can do it, but you got to upgrade to a MOSFET, so that's a really great point. Now, uh, another thing is, of course, we got to charge the batteries. Um, there's different kinds of chargers. Maybe you can uh, explain a little bit about them. I know there's one you just plug into your cigarette lighter there, and uh, I know that the other charger there that I have has the expansion uh, board there, and that allows you to charge multiple batteries, right? Yes. What you want to do when you're charging batteries is, I mean, you always have to make sure you have the correct charger for that chemistry of battery, and that's the number one thing you want to make sure you have down. There's a lot of chargers out now that say that they'll auto-detect the batteries, and some of them actually do it, um, some of them don't, so you want to be careful what you're looking at when you're purchasing a charger. Um, optimally, once you understand the basics of the different types of batteries, a charger like this one here, um, there's a bunch of different options out there on the market. Uh, again, shop around a little bit. Different performance packages and everything, different price ranges, different warranties that come with them. Um, some of them are built kind of cheap, but blow up quick. Other ones got five year warranties, so take that into mind when you buy one. Um, this type of charger will basically do anything to the lithium batteries, and that's all the different chemistries polymer, lithium ion, lithium phosphate. Um, there's different voltage ranges and this has all those ranges preset into it. Um, something like this is really good too because this gives you all your options. You can charge, you can discharge, you can do something called storage charging and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and this will make sure that you can properly maintain and monitor the battery during its whole life cycle to make sure everything is working as it's supposed to and it's a really safe way to do it. Um, now the other thing I like about these better chargers, uh, upgrade chargers maybe from the big, basic cigarette lighter plug charger or the one that you get with the gun, is that you can plug in the parallel board there so you can uh, basically just charge more batteries at the same time, right? Yes, um, when you're parallel charging, instead of having just one battery plugged in, a board like this will allow you to start charge six batteries at the same time. There's a Again, you got to get the basics of how the batteries work to really use one of these properly. Yeah, you want the um, right settings for sure. For instance, two 2200 milliamp batteries that are three cells, we would set this charger up if we put two of them on this board, like we're charging one 4400 milliamp battery. 
um, that will split the power evenly between these batteries and charge them both at the same time you know, a lot quicker. And there again, that's another advantage for the good chargers. All that stuff's pretty much automatic as long as you get it to the right amperage rate. And that's another thing. If you do want to try and charge a battery a little faster, I know there's different C ratings on batteries, which allows you to charge and discharge the batteries quicker. Um, if you do want to push it and charge it a little bit faster, can you explain that the rule and the, as far as the charge rate Absolutely. and how many amps you can push into it? All batteries are going to have a few different C ratings attached to them. The higher the C rating for the continuous discharge is going to determine how fast that battery can dump all its power. Um, a good example, if you take 5,000 milliamp batteries and look at those as 50 gallon barrels filled with water. Um, if you have a 25C and a 55C, but the same capacity, that 25C is going to have a hole about that big at the bottom of the barrel that all that water or fuel can dump out of. 55C, that hole just got that big. It can dump all that juice it has faster. It's going to give you more punch. It's going to be able to cycle faster. Um, and it's also going to be able to charge at a faster rate as well. As long as you have a 2C or a 3C charge rate, then you can charge it faster. A standard charge rate on a, any battery for most part, especially lithium batteries, is called the 1C charge rule. And that's one amp of charging power for every thousand milliamps of capacity. If you do it that way, it's the safest way to charge the battery. The chemicals stay nice and stable while it's charging up. It monitors properly, it bounces out a little bit better. It will take you an hour. Um, and that's the standard, the safest way that we always And that way there, if you don't really understand all of that, that rule keeps you safe. Yes. So that's um, great information. Now, if your battery says it can take a 2C charge rate, if, of course, 1 amp for every 1,000 milliamps is 1, then 2 amps for every 1,000 is a 2C. At that point, you can charge that battery in half the time. And instead of charging at and that's 2,200 why the at 2.2 amps, charge rate. you can now charge this battery at 4.4. Now, again, you can do it but it's going to be better for the battery overall lifespan wise if you stay at that 1C rule. Again, I work hard luckily, for my money to make it last. Luckily with the guns, they, the batteries get really long life, so we're generally not having to charge in a hurry in the field, but you never know on a big op. Um, the other um, thing about batteries though, of course, is, is, and one of the big things that people don't understand is they have to be stored at a certain uh, voltage, otherwise they'll go bad. And, uh, of course, you can't discharge them too much because a LiPo won't work anymore after it's discharged too much, correct? Correct. Um, the big difference between nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium in a lithium battery, the way the energy transfers, the way the energy performs inside the membranes of the cell itself. A nickel metal hydride battery, as it drains down, you notice a pretty steady degradation in performance. A LiPo battery, on the other hand, pretty much gives you total peak performance when you first start doesn't taper off very much as it goes across but once it hits a certain point it just drops like a rock um, and it's very important not to run your batteries past that point that they fall off that electrical cliff um, lipo batteries do not like to come back to life if that happens so um, what what that can definitely damage cells you don't want to do it what you want to do when you run a lipo is get a voltage alarm or some sort of voltage monitor all the rc aircraft and cars that run these batteries have what's called a voltage cutoff and once the voltage of the battery drops down to a certain point it just stops it from being able to work with an airplane fortunately they pulse the motor so you can at least bring it around and hopefully land it in time um guns don't have that they were all basically designed running nickel metal hydrides you can get a small piece like this that plugs right into the balancing port of the battery. With most nickel metal batteries, you just have one power lead coming off of it. With a lithium polymer battery or any lithium battery, you have two main leads. You have your main power plug, which is what you're going to plug in just like you do with everything else. And then you have this lead. This battery is a three cell, so there's actually four wires coming off of it. And this is attached to every positive negative point on this battery where they are linked together. Each cell individually has a usable voltage range of 4.2 volts on the high end when it's fully charged, down to roughly 3.2 to 3 volts on the low end. Right after that is where that cliff is. The battery itself, um, 
your standard car battery loves to be charged. That's why the alternator is running all the time you're driving it. This battery, you don't want to leave it fully charged. When you drain it down, you definitely don't want to leave it fully discharged either. When this battery is at that middle point, 3.8 volts per cell, that's called the storage mode. That's where the battery is when you buy it off the shelf. That's where it wants to be when it's not being used. So with a battery like that, charge it up when you're going to use it. When you get done using the battery at the end of the day, if it's discharged, a good charger like this one here will actually have a storage charge feature that will charge it up to that halfway point and stop. Store it like that until the day before you're going to run it again. Um, again, if you do it like that, your batteries are going to last a lot longer stretch that dollar out and that alarm allows you to uh not go below the range that you want to correct go. now the other thing Since the gun won't shut off this will give you an audible and a visual alert that you need to stop otherwise you're going to damage the battery so definitely good thing to have these things are only like 10 bucks now obviously with any of this technology there's a bunch of different uses for it and again the planes the ones that they make for planes are shaped different than the ones for the guns which are different for the boats different for the cars um, but sometimes you can find that one that's actually made for something else that's going to actually fit even better and give that's you the max burst. So actually the case, shop around if you really want to get into it. That's actually the case with the one in your right hand there. Yep. That's the one that I use in a couple of my guns there because I've got the space for it. So I use that bigger battery and it will no doubt last me throughout a game or several days if it's a mil sim. Running these batteries, you need to have something like this attached to the secondary lead. This is monitoring all the cells individually, and when that battery gets to the critical point that you have to stop, stop. This will give you audible tone and a red light to tell you it's time to stop playing with this. you got to charge it back up. Um, discharging it too far is a bad thing. You don't want to do that. And it's also a tester. So. And it will also test and tell you exactly how now, much juice is in the battery so you know if it's full. Now, when you're using that tester, how many? Uh, what's the full battery going to read per cell? How many volts? Fully charged is 4.2. Okay. Um, you don't want to discharge this battery down below 3.3, 3.2. Anything below that can actually damage the chemicals in the battery, and it's not going to react properly, and you lose a lot of life and performance out of it. Um, so something like this is definitely crucial. Great. When you're not using the battery, the other thing with these is they like to stay at 3.8 volts per cell. Um, something like this tells you exactly where you are in that range. So if you get a full charge, you don't want to store it for you a couple months. You don't want to charge up all your batteries when you get home playing for the weekend and leave them fully charged all week till the next weekend. Um, that's not going to be good for the batteries. You don't want to leave them dead either, though. These batteries like to stay at that middle voltage, 3.8. Um, some chargers are going to have a storage feature that will charge it to the midpoint. That's where you want the battery, unless you're going to be using it within like a 24 to 48 hour time frame. You know, run it down somehow and then charge it back up to that storage voltage and leave it put away like that. Alright, well that's about it, but there's one other thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I find that people are having problems with is all these guns <coughs> come with those Tamiya ends for the battery connectors and it's just aluminum and they're just horrible. What are your thoughts on them? Yes, when you switch to a higher output battery, um, the reason why they don't use those Tamiya plugs, and they had a bigger version that used to be on all the cars that's now done away with for the most part. Um, they don't deliver the high current capability that these batteries can give the gun so or the car, whatever it is. Those connectors will actually heat up and melt together. Um, I, I've seen quite a few of them where I'm surprised they didn't personally So your flames. connection can get bad on it? Yes. Plus, um, aluminum corrodes quicker than any other... Uh, and regardless of that, it's ridiculously hindering your performance. If you're going to a higher discharge battery, there's a million different plugs out there that have a zero loss to them. They'll handle up to like 44 volts without heating up at all. Um, Dean's plugs are one of the more popular. There's yeah, Traxxas the plugs, plug there's plug EC3s, there. there's XT60s, there's a million out there. Doesn't matter which one, as long as you upgrade that plug in, you'll eliminate a lot of problems with the Recommend find a plug gun. that does the job that you know you can get them readily at whatever hobby stores you have around. Um, Great. So. Alright, well I appreciate it, Steve. Not a problem. Right, some good information there. So, just one other thing to keep in mind is when you're charging these batteries, it can be dangerous, they can explode, there is a fire hazard, so uh, don't leave them unattended. When you're charging, stay with them. Don't set it on charge and go off and leave for the day. 
So uh, as long as you uh, keep safe when you're charging them, you'll have a lot of luck with your batteries and you won't have any problems. Thanks again, Steve. Not a problem. Take care.